Welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. Today I'm going to be covering over the crappie post-spawn and their movements after they get done spawning on Lake of the Ozarks. A lot of people know about this, that the crappie spawn is a very good time to catch fish. You can catch a lot of fish during that time. Big fish, they get up shallow. A lot of people, especially bank fishermen, can kind of lose these fish as they go and they leave the shallows and they kind of lose crappie for the year until they come back again in the spring or again in the fall when they move up shallow again. I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know, including the movements and baits you need to be fishing to catch these fish on Lake of the Ozarks during their post-spawn late spring movements. Let's get right into it and go down over here to a cove on the Grand Glaze. Okay, so this is the Grand Glaze bridge over here. We've got a couple different coves here I'm gonna point out to you guys. Crappie will go up here to spawn in the backs of these pockets on the pea gravel banks, like in the way back of this cove here, inside these little side pockets. Um, I'll zoom in here so you guys can see that a little bit better, but these side pockets right here, as well as these couple areas back here along the secondary point and the shallow areas that are highlighted here. Uh, and they follow these old creek beds moving in there. And then once the water temperature gets into the upper 60s, after the spawning period happens, when the water gets too warm for them to be spawning any longer, they will start to move their way back along the secondary points, following the old creek beds, and then moving along the old creek channels back out to deeper water, and people start to lose the fish because they end up suspending a lot of times in cover and around brush piles. Crappie are attracted to woody cover and brush piles all year long, doesn't matter if it's winter, spring, summer, or fall. You can usually find the fish around some sort of brush. They're not always all going to be in the brush. You know, there's always exceptions to that during the seasonal times of the year. But brush is like your most consistent thing uh, with crappie is locating them around brush piles. They love that stuff. So they leave the shallows. They go back to the first break lines. And so the first break lines would be like these steeper banks over here or drop off. Or they would be suspended up here like underneath this bigger, longer condo dock. Um, it's got a good drop off. It starts off shallow and then drops off down in through here so those fish can move along that break line throughout the day and suspend underneath the shade of that dock. A really good way to target those fish when they're up underneath the docks like that is by dock shooting and I'll have a tutorial for you guys on the channel here fairly soon of how to do that. When you're looking for a dock to select because there's so many on Lake of the Ozarks, I mean, just looking around here on the Osage, I'll go back out. But if you look at some of these coves, and even on these points here, you have all these docks, these big condo docks, all these little docks scattered around here from all the different homeowners. And it can be kind of overwhelming to figure out where you want to start. But really, the best thing to do for trying to figure out where a good dock is on Lake of the Ozarks is to look for areas that crappie would already be using. So a good dock that I would expect there to be crappie on during the post spawn would be some of these right over and through here on the secondary point and that kind of splits the cove up in two because it is right next to the deeper water so the fish have a little bit of access to deep water and they probably have some good brush piles that's stacked up here along this considering that there's already a little icon on here. Uh, Navionics uh, fish brain, these kind of apps and websites have these contours that you can follow and sometimes they'll mark like where brush piles are or fish structure is. So areas such as this are very good. As those fish will kind of move back out of the cove from these shallower areas back in here on either side of this and through these pockets that are scattered, they will move back along the old creek channels onto these points and kind of hang out over here. You can really select good docks by just looking at where fish are already going to be structured up on because there's so many of them around here. You have to look at what's underneath the dock. That's what really makes a dock good is what's underneath it and the level of shade that you get. A lot of times the paver style docks with the concrete on top have fewer cracks in them because there's no board gap and so like a wooden dock usually has a little bit more light under it than what a concrete dock does. So concrete docks have a little bit darker shade and sometimes that could be all the difference as well because a lot of these fish will move back out to the main lake along these different points along these condo docks and they'll suspend uh, different depths all over them and just kind of playing around day to day with your jigs as you dock shoot these is going to be about your best bet. I can't remember the name of this condo complex that's over here but there's a there's a lot of deep water and a lot of depth change along this. There's a huge point that kind of comes out and tapers off this direction. This little cove comes back over here and this is just the old river channel so it's super deep right off of these docks. 
Um, but these fish will suspend up all over and around these structures and you can vertically jig them if you're on top of these docks with like little Bob, Bobby Garland jigs such as these right here. This is on the far right I'm looking at over here, the Bobby Garland original baby shad. They have a really long, very sensitive tail so that little tail kind of flickers as you, as you pull it along just not even really having to move it too much and it drives crappie pretty crazy and they come out and, and kill that thing. I love to use the chartreuse colors, shad colors during this time of year. The fish are going back out and they're starting to feed. These fish are just as catchable as they are during the spawn. They just kind of move locations and a lot of people lose them during that transitional period. But they go back up underneath the docks and along the old creek channels and stuff. Uh, there's another cove over here on the Osage Arm. And they come back into the backs of this cove on either side of this big secondary point in here. And they'll move back out and they'll stage along the secondary point itself and along the creek channels, moving out back to the main lake and just kind of figuring out where they are underneath the docks from day to day. Like I said, brush piles are going to make certain docks better than others during this when they all kind of look about the same with the break lines in here besides this point itself. That's really going to be your biggest uh, advantage is knowing where the brush piles are if you have electronics to scan them or if you see brush that's sunk up shallow underneath somebody's dock walkway that you can still see during this time of year. You can usually find other brush that's further off that that person has sunk over the years. A lot of people throw their old Christmas trees off their docks and sink them for fish habitat. Another way if you do have a boat to catch these fish is to come out to some of these points and along the old creek channels that are more open. I'll go over here back to the glaze with a few docks for a better example of where this is better to be done at. Back here on the glaze arm, in this big long cove here, the fish will come back in and they'll spawn in these pockets and they'll move back out and they'll suspend around these secondary points and little bends and things along this old creek channel. And if you come over here you can see that there's a creek bed down in here. Uh, there's actually an old road bed and stuff. It's probably a little bit too deep for the fish to be around a lot of the time, but they could kind of suspend over the top of it, possibly. These areas are very good if you want to try to troll crankbaits through, and these crankbaits cover a lot more ground for you and figure out where these fish are because a lot of times they do suspend in the middle of a water column. It might be like 10 to 12. Sometimes it's a little bit deeper. They're down to like 20 feet deep. And it, as the summer goes on, there's a thermocline that gets set up in the water and the fish will usually hug right around that thermocline. A lot of people troll for crappie during the late spring and early summer with these flicker shads. By Berkeley, they do very well. They make them in a lot of different sizes. I like using the shad colored. Very natural forage for this lake. There's a lot of shad that we have here. I'm not sponsored by any of these people, but I do like using their products. This is a Mid-South Glow Jig I like using. It's very good for dock shooting. Once they get up underneath the shade of that dock, they glow in the water, so it really catches the fish's attention. Uh, they glow like a chartreuse color, so you can use uh, more of like a shad colored, like a pearl or blue and white or a little bit of a silver. And then if you have more of a stain to a really heavy muddy water situation, I like using the straight chartreuse to catch these fish. The main lake points out here can be good for trolling crankbaits as well. They get a lot better when the dam is running current through there. The old creek beds and, and river channels kind of start to get a little bit of a current going along the bottom and it positions the shad out there and the, all kinds of fish go out there to feed up on them. Bass, crappie, catfish, white bass, you name it. It's out there. It's where all the bait kind of starts to <clears throat> translate into and go out back out to along these points. Like this really big long point over here, the crappie will probably set up along here with the bait fish when they're out there. And you can troll little flicker shads and you'll probably catch a lot of other stuff besides just crappie because everything's out there eating them. Eating the shad, but you can catch them out there. An important thing to also remember on this lake is not all these fish will spawn and complete their spawning process at the same time. The fish up here along the upper Grand Glazed Arm and the upper Nianguas and upper Osage and upper Gravways those far ends of the lake will heat up faster and they'll be more or less further along to the post spawn while the dam is starting to get into spawning phases still. So keeping in, in mind that they do not spawn all at the same time in the same body of water because the lake is so big and diverse, they all kind of fish a little bit differently than each other. So just kind of pay attention to water temperature. Once it gets into the 60s, they start moving further back out. Otherwise, you can still catch them up here in the shallows by the dam during the times when the upper arms of the lake are starting to get into more of a post-spawn phase. They will follow that same pattern back out through these coves here. The dam area's got a little bit cleaner water. Same sort of thing that I told you down there, just kind of patterning the fish. 
uh, with the same sort of deal where they're coming along the docks and creek channels and points you control, you can dock shoot, or you can vertical fish them. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this, drop a thumbs up down below. Leave a comment if you have any other questions for me or have any suggestions of what you would like to see next on the channel. And we'll catch you on the next one.